And I love to have a sense of opening, a sense of door. I like how it's so dark when you come in. I think it's so beautiful to be surprised after you enter that it's not just concrete. I think it's really quite beautiful. This is Punchbowl, a bustling suburb of Sydney's west population of 20,000 plus. A refuge for migrants. More than a third are Muslim. Even so, it's never had its own specially built mosque. But that's all changing with the opening of Sydney's newest mosque. A large concentration of Muslims has to have a suitable mosque to cater for that need. And it's basically hit the spot, basically. So people are looking forward for it, for that. Every society you live on, you have, like, you have to pray. Yeah, you believe in God. So you need mocks around you. Yeah. And we need to go our children to know what is the religion, you know. So that's why we need mocks around us. This building is already an icon having won awards for architectural excellence. The architect, Angelo Candelepis, is actually a Christian of Greek Orthodox faith. Many people think it's not important to come from some sort of value system if you're an architect. And I think it's important to recognise that it's the only thing that matters, that you have a value system for the things in which you engage. One of the things that really impresses me with Angelo's design is the uh, minaret. It's not initially apparent, and so it's definitely not a traditional minaret. But what Angelo's done is he's put that curved feature in the front of it, uh, which is a reflection of the traditional form, but then he's added a contemporary twist to it. And um, I think that's part of the brief that we gave to Angela for this mosque. The minaret is a tower. Traditionally, five times a day, the call to prayer is heard from it, beckoning Muslims to the mosque. You have to ask the question, what is a minaret? And a minaret is about sound. It's about the call to prayer. It's about an idea that there's something to be rejoiced and that all people should hear it. It's even more wonderful if you can't see the source of the sound. And in this mosque, you will be able to hear the call to prayer. You will know where it's coming from, but it won't be obvious where it's coming from. For the last 26 years, Punchbowl's Muslims have had to make do with these temporary premises for worship. Everyone is looking forward to the new mosque opening. Muslims make up around uh, 30 to 35% of the population in Punchbowl. 
So that is a sizable amount of Muslims. I think it represents about 7,000 Muslims from the 2016 census. This is definitely more than just a building. A mosque brings our community together, not just to pray, but people like to mingle outside. They, they see their friends. And you're getting together with people that you sometimes haven't seen for a while, and you get to catch up with them in the mosque. It was back in 2007 when the Punchbowl Muslims began to look for an architect, perhaps someone who'd produced a similar project. And it was proposed to us to review the work of Angelo Candelepis, which we did. And he had worked on a school attached to a church in Belmore, which is a neighbouring suburb. The school, for which Angelo received three awards in 2009, is in fact next to his own parish church of All Saints. From my point of view, then, when someone came and asked us to do a mosque, all I knew was the Greek Orthodox background, so I found it very difficult to accept doing it without asking around. <laughs> And I didn't know what to do, so I spoke to him with the Greek Orthodox priest who was encouraging us to do a, a small project up at Gladesville. I said to him, Father Angelo, what on earth does this mean? Should I really be doing a mosque? Should I, be, I mean, it's ridiculous for me to be doing a mosque. What would I know about doing these things? And he said, we're all the children of God and you must do every single such project that comes to you. So now, here I am, without really knowing how it came to be, I've got more religious projects coming out of my ears than I could ever have imagined possible. When we met with uh, Angelo, uh, he asked us what type of mosque did we want him to design, whether it was going to be a traditional mosque, as in the mosques in the large Muslim countries overseas. Uh, most of the Muslims that we have living in Panjabal come from the Middle East. So the question was, are we going to build a mosque that this community uh, can relate to, are familiar with, or are we going to uh, get Angelo to des design a new and contemporary mosque? And we, we decided to go with a new and contemporary design. Next uh, feature that I like uh, of the mosque is the way Angelo designed the uh, ablution block. In particular, the natural light that comes on both sides of it. I think it's important to have the light come down in this beautiful way and enable them to start to get inspired about how they're going to worship. I think that's a beautiful way of starting the worshipping process. It's both a, a physical cleansing as well as a spiritual preparation for the prayer itself. With the water running, we'll then wash our hands three times, both hands, then rinse them out three times, rinse the nose three times, wash the face three times, Wash the arm up to the elbow three times, including the elbow. First, right first, then left. Then wipe the head and just wipe out the ears. Then wash the feet, including the ankle, three times, right foot first. And the left three times, including the ankles. And that's it. Beautiful. What's lovely is that I think many faiths particularly the Christian faith, has this concept of cleansing and water. I think that's a very beautiful thing. I think it's an eternal thing that we have in the Christian faith. It's baptism, but they do it every day. First thing, you need to have the attention what you go in for prayer. And when you go in, you need to have an clean clothes, you know, you smell nice, you know, if you want to come go visit uh, the queen or the king, you're not going to come with the 
bad clothes, you need to have a nice clothes to go to enter the, the, the mosque. So it's the same because actually when you go to the mosque, you are with God, you know, with Allah. You know, you need to be in good uh, shape and nice and clean. Hanadi Afuni has worked at the mosque for over 10 years. She has watched every step of the build. Looking at the plans from the beginning, we were actually quite excited to have such a new, modern plans to go ahead in this place, especially with where we were at, you know, having something not as traditional as all of the other mosques. So I was pretty excited to have something different built. As the stages went on, it was a little bit, like having, having it all built in concrete was a little bit daunting at first. Here we are. This is the entry. I like to call it the pronos because it gives you a sense of excitement, you know, about the prospect of entering a huge space inside. The mosque is not that big, so we needed to create a sort of, let's call it, balanced proportion between inside and out. This is why this is so intimate, it's so small. It's a bit like entering a cave. But just before you enter, there's this moment of constriction and at all times you're aware that something enormous is beyond. If you have a look at the entry uh, to the mosque, it draws you in. So that particular wall on that side there curved in towards this main foyer. And the other thing that happens is the floor rakes up and the ceiling then becomes compressed. You can see the height uh, between myself and the ceiling is pretty low. And, and the concept that, that, that resonates with me is that it, it is a humbling effect for the worshipper. As the worshipper comes into the mosque and it compresses them, one of the things that we need to submit, and the, the prayer itself is about submission and submitting to God. And one aspect of a Muslim prayer is to put the forehead onto the ground. So this initial compression assists in that. It reminds the worshipper that they are now entering a place of prostration and that they need to humble themselves in front of God. Unlike men, women aren't obligated to come to the mosque. But when we do, we pray behind the men for reasons of respect and modesty. But here at Punchbowl Mosque, we have our own sections where we can connect with other women, have a chat and have freedom of movement. We've got a beautiful, huge window that gives us plenty of light. This seats about 40, 50 women at a time. We have brought the ladies section further in towards the men's section, so we are still participating within the sermons and the prayers. So a woman needs to bend and prostrate, so for her to feel comfortable that, you know, there are no males behind her. From the women's gallery, we are in the middle of the mosque and we're very close to the dome here as well, which is a very, really nice feel. Being up so high feels quite privileged to be very close to the dome. And at the same time, we can see what's happening and um, feel quite royal up here. <laughs> Ever since 9-11 and the rise of Islamophobia, the building of mosques has met with resistance in some parts of Australia. But in Punchbowl, with the advantage of a large Muslim population, there was no community protest. The obstruction came from local council. We worked hard with council and the planners at council. Angela worked hard with them to get a design that would get the project across the line. And on the night that it was voted on in council, uh, there was unanimous agreement to support the project, uh, which um, 
uh, which I think was perhaps the first time that a MOS project uh, achieved that milestone. Basement one. Even so, Council put many obstacles forward, one which nearly killed the whole project. We would love to have built a larger mosque to accommodate more people, uh, because a mosque of 300 to accommodate for 7,000 people who live in the area uh, is, is going to provide uh, a facility, but it's already going to be uh, full to capacity. Uh, the mosque itself was only licensed for 300 worshippers, and that restriction was because of parking that needed to provide it on site. Nevertheless, building of an attached primary school had to be cancelled as $7 million was diverted from the mosque's $12 million budget to pay for this car park. Basement 1. Doors opening. So this is our empty car park. It's very interesting that there's this impost in religious buildings. I think it's a bit of a ruse. I think people uh, in councils try very hard to stop things like mosques from happening. And how they do that is they say, well, you've got to have uh, one car space per two people worshipping. Never mind that you don't have worshippers that want to drive because it's within their religion to have to walk. We're going to make this a requirement. And here it is, the empty car park. Well, I think the car park costs 60% of the project, which is, I think, unfair. Never been used. <laughs> it's amazing. It almost stopped the project. Well, it's a huge car park. It's two stories of this. The community donated heavily for this mosque. We've had quite a few fundraising events uh, for the mosque to raise funds. We even had one fundraising event here in the car park, just as it was like it was, it was built, but still wasn't open to the public yet. The mosque was finished a couple of years ago, but due to not getting our occupational certificate, it's just taken a bit longer than we anticipated. We actually never thought that we'd have this place built. In terms of the building material, that was Angelo's choice and he promoted the idea of a, an off-form concrete, so using concrete. And the choice of concrete rather than brick is that concrete has a closeness to a natural material. And I think that's why Angelo uh, preferenced the use of concrete. Uh, the use of a natural form and leaving it in that completed form and, and not painting it, which is something new as well and, and, and something that the community will need to get uh, used to, especially the older generation. Uh, one of the most common questions we get is, when are we painting it? Um, but the off-form concrete look appeals to the younger generation. I think, I think they get it. They can see that this is something new, a new interpretation a contemporary interpretation of what a mosque can look like. Not everyone is keen on the new mosque's look. Comparing it to the heavy, raw concrete constructions of the mid-20th century, the so-called brutalist era, This is not the concrete of the brutalist period. This is a high technology concrete. And I think the most important thing about it is it offers an opportunity to create a building made of one material. The sunlight is coming through the oculus in the dome. 
The other thing that Angelo incorporated in the dome are features similar to the uh, ancient Pantheon, with first starting out first with the, the concrete rings and then continuing into the lining of the dome with the timber rings ending in the oculus in the, in the center of the dome. It's interesting to have a dome with an oculus. What that means is that the light comes out of the center from the heavens. Not all domes have an oculus. In fact, I don't know of any Muslim uh, building that has an oculus. Most of them allow the light to bounce in from below. But here, what is important in the architecture is to get that sense of connectivity to the heavens. And that makes for a very intimate relationship with you and God, for me. The features which seem to catch everyone's attention are the mini-domes, called makanas in Arabic. Maqarnas are mini domes, uh, vaulted shapes, honeycomb shapes. Angelo then played with an idea of having these mini domes in this particular corner of the, of the mosque, on these two ceilings. And then he decided to expand it to the entirety of both ceilings, both left and, and right. And that's, that's how we get this, uh, these amazing uh, sculptured uh, mini domes. And, and, and what I normally do is when I assist people in their visits to the mosque, I bring them to this particular corner of the mosque where you get this amazing cut through these, these mini domes because it cuts through the, the, the two ceilings. There are 102 of these mini domes and that presented Punchbowl with an opportunity to paint the 99 names of God in each one. So we brought a calligrapher from overseas to paint in gold the 99 names of God, one name in each of these mini domes. Arabic is written from right to left, so we started out with the first one which says Allah. He is Allah, He is the God. Allah meaning the God. Ar-Rahman, the most gracious. Ar-Rahim, the most merciful. And then it continues until, until the last uh, name at the end. If you aren't able to adorn the interior of a temple with icons, then it becomes a very important thing to concern yourself about how to offer detail in a building. My favourite feature of the mosque would have to be the Mukhanases with the gold calligraphy and the carpet. The red carpet has just made the concrete just feel so much more, more alive and it's just brought warmth to the whole place. Uh, I would say uh, it's bold, it's beautiful, it's contemporary, and it's warm. I think these are the best words to describe our mosque. Allah. Muslims are generally uh, struggling in the current climate in Australia. There are so many issues that go into that mix that make it difficult, especially for some young Muslims. Muhammad, 
what we need to do, and, and, and mosque is a good place to do that, is to provide for them a, a sanctuary, a spiritual sanctuary, where they can come, they can, they can feel uh, an ownership, they can feel a sense of belonging. And I think a mosque is important for that, to help them deal with the everyday challenges that they face. It doesn't have to be the fact that they're Muslim. Many people face uh, different challenges on a daily basis, and I think a mosque is a good place to provide that spiritual sanctuary for them.